Uh, my name is Kosh Merotra, I stand as CEO of IMZ Corporate Private Limited. Uh, we started our operations in 2019. Our core competency is uh, secure logistic tracking and tracing. So we do the manufacturing, supply, installation, deployment, integration and commissioning of the digital based e-locks as well as uh, the GPS devices, whether they are non AIS 140 or AIS 140 compliant with BIS standards 16833. So, in secure logistics, our, uh, our emphasis is on the operational efficiency, the administrative efficiency, and the financial efficiency. And we cater the clientele varying from B2G, B2B, and B2C. Uh, apart from this, uh, we ensure that the Conventional methods are now being obsolete and due to that we ensure that now the journey is to be done through digitization. So right. any of the e-locks could be opened through a OTP, on, uh, that's the one-time password, or through a Bluetooth, or through an infrared, through a RFID uh, card, whether it's LF or HF, working on uh, the 125 kilohertz or 13.56 megahertz. Apart from this, we are also capable to open the e-lock uh, through a mobile app, whether it's Android or iOS, as well as through a web app. Uh, apart from this, uh, there are further features, not only that we provide the e-locks, uh, we provide the entire turnkey solution where we are providing the MIS reports, the uh, web applications, a lot of features enabling to ensure that all the alerts are coming on the dashboard and we are able to uh, get the details of the uh, over speeding, harsh acceleration, harsh braking, tilt turn uh, on the dashboard specifically catering to the authorization and authentication of the user rights whether it's a site manager whether it's a finance manager whether it's a operations manager or whether it's an admin manager so the privileges and the features whichever uh, cadre of the hierarchy of the professional is wanting to see they are able to see it just on a fraction of seconds on the dashboard on the mobile app or on the web app so products as i mentioned we are having varied type of uh, e-locks so e-locks vary in terms of size due to because the privileges are varying in terms of the battery backup so the battery backup varies from 5000 mAh to 15000 mAh so so if i see a log this could be of 5000 mAh this could be of 15000 mAh so let's say a vehicle has to fly from telangana to jharkhand and come back and the entire journey is crossing seven to eight states so recommended e-lock would be with the 15,000 or 10,000 mAh the battery backup could vary from 30 days to 60 days because the polling uh, of the e-lock can be changed through the OTA commands over the year so on the over the year I am able to do the configuration over the year and the firmware over the year which enables me to do the polling changing from 48 hours to one minute so till the time e-lock is in the inventory I ensure that the polling happens in 24 hours and it tells that I am alive and after that once it it's on, on roll in the road, it starts pulling every minute or every 300 seconds, that's uh, every 5 minutes. So that ensures the battery is optimized and as well as the battery is taken into consideration till the time lo the lock comes back, it, it keeps on pulling. Through the pulling, it ensures to uh, do the lock and unlock as mentioned earlier with different very type of features through Bluetooth, infrared. Uh, RFID and the other uh, the other features yeah so in EV uh, like I, I believe that the EV industry and the IOT or the AIDC industry from we come uh, come through that's the automatic identification and data capturing components EV is requiring a lot of uh, EV based GPS devices that is specifically to the two wheelers three wheelers and four wheelers so we have made those products as well as EV is wanting EV, EV chargers for two wheelers and three, wheel, three wheelers so we are having the EV chargers also into consideration uh, which directly can be plugged in and we can charge the vehicles through these EV chargers. So the GPS industry getting integrated with the EV industry is an inclusive growth for both the verticals or both the domains and surely they would complement because uh, you would be surely wanting to know your EV vehicle how much battery is low when. So, so I would be giving you all the type of alerts that you are going on a deep sleep mode or the vehicle is having battery hardly 10%. We could also go for ignition off, ignition off when the battery goes as 20% uh, or um, automatically, automatically yeah, yeah, yeah. The right word uh, is that uh, 
the entire monetization could happen uh, of, of the uh, life cycle of the battery through the through the GPS device, and all the alerts could ensure that the console being connected to the CAN, and I ensure that the vehicle can be monitored, the vehicle can be taken care of through through my portal. As I mentioned, we have also put our uh, hands in a lot of other IoT sensors. So the IoT sensors uh, envisages uh, to give us the temperature sensors, the BLE sensors, the FMS, that's the fuel management fuel system. Management. Uh, digital based uh, fuel rods or the fuel sensors so these sensors had been integrable into the diesel vehicles or the petrol vehicles to 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 do the integration uh, and getting uh, to know as how much fuel is left whereas similarly we have made products as mentioned as ev batteries which ensures to let you know how much battery is left ahead. yeah yeah so 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 complementing the uh, load sensors or the fuel sensors or the temperature sensors so that temperature sensor again can be used here to know as how much heated your product is correct your your, your vehicle is vehicle so the is iot sensor remains same if the fuel is changing so just the methodology is changing but the basis of a IoT company or a AIDC company remains same and we think that these would be the sensors we would be able to inculcate in the next three to five years and do an integration and a marriage with these type of companies wow. where we create an ecosystem where you get to know all the details on a mobile app. Right. You ask me the chip shortage that is oh. currently uh, uh, at the critical uh, uh, adverse adverse uh, crisis of covid 19 that mm -hmm. time the chips uh, uh, shortage or the queue was 52 weeks okay. which now it is landed up to 20 weeks but still we have maintained our inventory of the components because we are into manufacturing and we have the assembly line so in that we have maintained all the components which are required to do the improvisation in terms of the locks or the gps devices but surely i would say that the chip shortage has yet not got completely uh, uh, yeah, yeah yeah it is a part uh, and we have to still uh, cope have, yeah cope up with that and have a lead time of 100 plus days minimum so how big is your dealer network and what are your plans to expand your so dealer network if i get into the dealer network we are into the as i mentioned to the b2g so into the b2g part we are having the tenders as well as the impanelments so if i talk about the recent uh, bihar as 140 impanelment we got one of our partners impaneled there and so uh, we have been constituting around 100 plus dealers in bihar so we have our great hands in orissa so total expansion of 200 plus dealers we have on board as of now pan india we look forward to make this number as 500 dealers pan india yeah. the model is basically of the cnfc we understand that the market is become very hybrid in nature we we have to complement each of the competitors also complement each other surely the online uh, online portal is there we have got our registration in msme in gem so if government wants to buy it through gem portal we can buy as well as uh, in b2b partnership uh, certain of the business uh, relationships or the networking happens Great. so we can Great. sell through the channel partners so to be very true uh, want to sell them enter to the b2c market we want to put our great hands in b2g mm -hmm. tenders impanelment and b2b and uh, making a cnf model into the dealership model where we create the R rfcs those are the retrofitment centers where we have the dealers ensuring to take care of that city maybe we could have multiple dealers for one city and ensuring to put the terms and conditions black and white and we follow and promise as what protocol we have laid down right. as a uh, as a b2b partner right so measures right. in the ev is that see the, there are surge uh, surge protection devices spds uh, which uh, which are the components which generally the companies uh, just to a shortage of certain amount of rupees or certain dollars uh, exempt those components in the product so i believe that those fuses and the spg protector so the devices should be a part as a mandate uh, from supply or the manufacturing point of view so we ensure to put that and we ensure that the vehicle would not be overheated neither the device would be overheated so that any any type of spark or the fire happens no yes yes on the quality check and the spd uh, connectors or the spd ic's and the capacitors should be mandate and as well as uh, csr activity every of the organization not to say 200 rupees should 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 not make a blunder yeah yeah and and, and have a great mess in terms of a vehicle burning or a human human loss happening yes, in the market yes.